Let your ears not deceive you. This is not Wednesday. It's Friday. It is Friday. It's but we're freaking here. awesome Friday. Why, why are we here on a Friday at 10 a.m. instead of Wednesday at 9 a.m., right? It is not the apocalypse, ladies and gentlemen. The, the world is not over. It is not doomsday. It is Friday. And Prepper Talk Radio has moved to Fridays to lighten up your weekend, to brighten up your weekend, give you purpose again. I like that. And so don't worry that it's, it's, it's not. We didn't go back to the middle of the week. It is Friday. So. so every Friday from now on, tune in every Friday, 10 a.m., Prepper Talk Radio here on K Talk Media. And let this mu- music begin your weekend, right? Absolutely. All right, cool. And as so, usual, we are brought to you by yes. Survival Medical, survival-medical.com. Check them out. They're going to be at PrepperCon. You've probably seen their logo on our billboards all over town for PrepperCon coming up April 21st and 22nd at the Southtown Expo Center. It's going to be huge. It's going to be insane. It's going to be it awesome. It's going to be insane. I, I'm not even sure how I'm going to deal with it yet. We've got three times as many survival experts and survival celebrities as before. You know, So the, the level of play has gone up. So if you're like, well, I don't know if they really have a class for me, oh, touche, we have a class for you. Uh, we've got more more gear, more products, more different types of resources, um, plus all the training. We've got the Knife Fight tournaments coming back. We've got an actual active shooter simulator. Uh, so you can actually walk through with the airsoft guns so you're not going to die. But you can see what it's really like. The you aggression may get a levels welt, are real. Though, right? You may, you may hurt yeah, a little potential. bit. potential. Depends on how good a shot you are. Uh, if you shoot the guy, bad guy quickly, then no, you won't get shot. Yeah, there you go. So it's going to be a lot of fun. And we've got a fun show today. We're actually going to highlight some of the different people that are going to be at. PrepperCon, um, and we're going to start off with our good friends over at Valley Food Storage. All right, let's bring him on. Are you, uh, are you there, James? Oh, hang on a second. Let's do this. Hopefully I don't hang up on you. Let's bring you on again. Okay, there you are. Can are you there, me? James? All right, yeah, welcome to the show. Can Thank you hear you us? Thank you so much for having me on. I oh. appreciate it. There we go. We Thank got a little you. bit of lag, but we got you. Now, James, you're you're kind of the the big head honcho, pretty much over there at uh, at Valley Foods, and well, well, I guess Wayne's technically the head honcho, but you're the second head honcho, right? <laughs> uh, I work with a lot of great people, so there, there's multiple head honchos over here. Awesome. Well, you guys have tasty food, like seriously, amazingly good food, and and I know that from personal experience because I've actually eaten a bunch of it. Um, we've taken it camping. We we haven't had to use it in an emergency situation, which. It's kind of the nice thing about it is you don't have to wait for that. But tell us, tell us for our listeners' benefit, a little bit about Valley Food Storage and, and kind of where you guys came from and what you guys are doing because it's it's a little bit nicer than what everybody else is doing. It seems. Well, well, thank you. Yeah, I appreciate it. I'm glad, I'm glad you like the food. So our story is a, a little bit different. Um, I actually never went into this thinking that I would be in the food storage industry, um, but after Wayne and I got together uh, and started to you know, get into food storage and, and preparing and, and doing a few things when the world kind of seemed like we needed to do it. Uh, we started looking into food, and, and we realized that a lot of the food that was out there is just not something we were comfortable buying or storing or eating. Um, so we started to source things ourselves and started to take a look and see what we could do to actually get real nutrition. And, and after we started to do that, we got so many people that were very interested, we started to think, well, maybe this is something that we can provide to everybody. So um, we've really kind of taken our time and tried to eliminate the things that you just don't need, and we've really focused on nutrition um, and taste. So if you do use this, uh, if it's not in an emergency situation, like myself, I'm, I'm a single guy. I don't really like to cook, so I can just throw this in a pot when I get home for dinner, and, and it tastes great, and I know I'm getting great nutrition. And, and that's kind of where we started with the company, and it's, it's, it's grown to now we do fruits and vegetables and all sorts of stuff you can snack on. So we really enjoy it. We love the industry. We love getting to talk to people like you, and, and we're just happy to be here. Well, that's awfully nice of you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, so you guys are coming to PrepperCon. Um, you're actually one of, the, one of the big sponsors for PrepperCon. Thank you for that. Um, now, at PrepperCon, you guys do things a little, little bit differently. Um, you actually let people taste your food. They're serving up a feast there. Oh, yeah. Oh, we love PrepperCon. It's, it was so great last year, and we're so happy to be a part of it again this year. It's, yeah, I learned so much by going, so I, I would encourage everybody to come out and check it out. But, yeah, we really do, and we're going to have even more products uh, for people to come by and test. I mean, we've got stuff from, like, your normal entrees that you can come by and really check out, all the way to freeze-dried coconut milk drops or peanut powder even, stuff like that that wow. you haven't really thought of in the past that is delicious and adds nutrition um, and is really fun just to eat uh, any time. Now, let's go back to this peanut powder for a second. My wife's a big peanut butter freak. Like, she loves it. 
Me too. Um, I'm not a big <sighs> peanut butter guy, but you throw some jam on there, and it's all of a sudden really, really good, right? Yeah. So this powder, like, really simple to just make into peanut butter, or is it not for peanut butter? What's no. it for? Super simple. So peanut powder is really kind of amazing. Um, they press the peanuts, and then they eliminate all the oils and a lot of the fats out of it. So you actually get this peanut butter that is completely healthy for you, and all it takes is a little bit of water to bring it back into peanut butter. Or like me, I, I throw it in my shakes all the time um, oh, to give it kind of that peanut taste. I mean, you can use it in, like, cooking for, like, pie, uh peanut sauces. Oh. Um, so it's fantastic. And we've got all sorts of products like that. We've got, like, little coconut drops, like I mentioned before, or also any of our freeze-dried fruits right? and vegetables that you can just throw in, and you don't have to worry about refrigerating them or throwing them away at the end of the week When, because, let's face it, none of us ever eat all of our vegetables that we're supposed to. I do. The what are you talking about? Around. Oh, you don't. <laughs> Nobody does. That's true. You hey, got me. One thing I wanted to touch on here real quick is uh, – Something that a lot of us don't don't recognize, don't realize, and we haven't really talked about it much on the show, is that uh, energy shakes are really a great sur- call it a survival food. It's a great oh, uh, yeah. everyday food, but also you know something really quick that you can whip together uh, in an emergency situation, and it doesn't take really much to whip that thing up and and have a nutritious, really a nutritious meal really quickly while you're on the run. I mean, literally, if you're on the run or if you're bugging out or whatever, you can make a shake oh. while you're on the move. Oh, yeah, for sure. You know, just throw in a few of our peanut powder or, or um, you know, any of our vegetables or our, Some our fruit as well. You know, our, our fruits, yeah. shake it in there. You're, you're good to go. And not even, not to mention the meats that we have. Uh, you can actually freeze dry meat uh, to add in protein for, to things. And, and we, we offer that as well. Into your shake? You want to put meat in your shake? Hey, don't well, listen. He's, if he's, if this enough, guy's I mean, yoked. Rocky, yeah. I'm not that tough. James is, James is built like, I don't know, Rocky or, okay, or, you're or right. one of those guys that could knock me out. <laughs> he needs so that kind of protein, you got to right? say nice things. If he throws meat into his shake, you got to trust him. Hey, well, we've got a call here in line three. I, I think maybe we should uh, roll the dice, see what kind of question they have. Hello there. Oh, let me try that again. Hello there. What's your name? And you have a comment or question for us? Yeah, I haven't heard you mention the address of where this, where they have their store. Oh, okay. Fantastic. You wanted to go ahead and do that, James? Yeah, sure. So we have a beautiful Thanks new facility. Um, it's, and it's, at, uh, it's in Linden. We're at 1020 West, 600 South, uh, right across the street from the Harley-Davidson shop uh, here in Linden. Uh, we're really proud of it. You guys can come down and see us anytime, or you can always visit us at valleyfoodstorage.com. Um, we have a lot of people here that are that would love to help you out. Awesome, and you guys. The nice thing I love about what you guys do is is you actually tailor make what people are looking for. So if if someone comes in, they're like, "Well, I don't know what I need to do." You'll ask them about their family. You'll ask them about what's going on, what they're preparing for, what what their current eating needs are like. Um, and this is my favorite thing: is you help them get the foods that they're used to eating. Um, yeah. One of the things I find, in, especially in food storage, is a lot of people will stock up on things like MREs. Mm-hmm. And while that's edible, it's not your daily normal food. And so you're going to have digestive problems as you're adjusting to these foods. Or if you're just stocking up on only, like, rice and beans, mm-hmm. you're going to have some digestive problems as you you know, tra- transition to those foods in an emergency situation. But when it's really good, tasty entrees and really good fruits and vegetables, you know that's easy to transition to, and, and it doesn't really mess up your diet at all. And that's one of the things oh, I love I, about what you guys it. do. Yeah, that, that's a great point. Um, it, you, we, we, our goal was to try to make this food seem like it was a home cooked meal, like something that you just came home to and was, uh, and you made from scratch. So you're right. And, and anytime you do go strictly on an MRE diet or things like that, you are going to have problems. And we didn't realize how many dietary restrictions people have uh, for their for themselves. So when we kind of got into this, we didn't realize how many different things were were issues. So we've really taken that to heart. And, and anybody can come in. And we'll tailor made a package for you to make sure that it's exactly what you need, whether it's gluten free or dairy free or, or whatever restrictions you have. And, and we're going to give you that nutrition. And we all know, you know, as time goes on, how important nutrition actually is. And that's what we're going to focus on. We're going to get you exactly what you need in a survival situation or for camping or whatever else you need. Now, I've also noticed that you guys do everything in, in Mylar bags. We do. Yep. We, we actually just improved our bag. Um, it makes it lighter, easy to store. Um, uh, you don't have any worries with metal contaminations. Um, and, and it's got such a low oxygen uh, transfer rate now um, that it's just a fantastic option. 
uh, for people that really want to put this stuff away and, and be prepared. Awesome. Now, I, I love I love that your bags are also also have a, a Ziploc on the top, so I don't have to eat it all at once. You know, the, the thing I hate with the typical your your number ten cans that a lot of the other places push is you open it and then you've got yeah. a year to use it. You, but if it's less, like even less time. or less, yeah. you know, up to a year, but you've got to crash through that can pretty quickly mm-hmm. for it to still be really good. Um, mm-hmm. It doesn't seal very well. Where yours, I can reseal it, leave it alone, come back six months a year later. But it's also only what four to five servings per container. Yeah, so our entrees are four to five. Um, our fruits and vegetables and meats and things are a little more. And you're right, those tin cans are really good uh, in some situations. But once you open them up, you're going to have issues because, uh, as you know, freeze-dried food takes all the moisture out of it. So once you open it, and if you've got it open to moisture, that food is going to start retaining moisture just out of the air, especially in humid climates. So oh, yeah. that Ziploc bag will really give you an extra, extra life uh, on your food. Awesome. Well, what can people expect? I mean, we've got a few minutes before the break. What can people expect to see from you guys at PrepperCon? Oh, we're going to blow out PrepperCon. We were so excited to be there. We're so excited to be a part of it again. Um, We're going to have just about everything there for you guys to taste and try uh, and come see kind of what food storage has come into in the last couple of years. It's really changed from when most people were really stocking up. It's Uh, We've changed it in both taste and quality and nutrition, and we're just happy to have people come by. And if they have any questions, come by and ask us. We'll have plenty of people at the booth. Uh, And, again, free samples. You can't beat free food. Hey, that's like Costco, but better. (laughs) Yes, exactly. (laughs) Well, James, thanks so much. Well, this time around anyway. Yeah, thanks so much for being on the show with us today, and thank you for being part of PrepperCon. We're really excited. You guys, Valley Food Store is incredible. What's the address of your store again? And then give us the website one more time. Sure, it's 1020 West, 600 South in Linden, Utah, and visit us anytime at valleyfoodstorage.com. Awesome. Hey, thanks, James, so much. We'll see you in a couple of weeks at PrepperCon. Yeah, see you guys at PrepperCon. Looking, Looking forward, forward to, to it. it. All right. Thanks. So James is, James is a lot of fun. I love Valley Food Storage. These guys know what they're doing, and they take a lot of thought, and, and they really care about the process and not just making a dollar and selling food. Um, it's all food that you really want to eat, and it's it's very tasty. We've actually taken it camping. Um, we've done some video with it, and then we lost that footage because the camera died. But we're going to be taking it camping here again pretty soon. So s- stay tuned. Follow our Facebook page, Prepper Talk Radio. Uh, we're going to be posting videos during PrepperCon, before PrepperCon, and then a ton after PrepperCon because we want to show you how the different products that we're interfacing with work so that you're more informed when it's time for you to go buy something. Preparedness does not end with PrepperCon, so this is not the ultimate event. It's just a, a stepping stone for you guys and for us, too. Absolutely. So. It's a process. And, and, and the nice thing about preparedness is it's an integration into your life. It's not a life overhaul or total life change. It's just an integration into your life. Like For me, it's more of a, a, a not a passive activity, but mm-hmm. it's, it's like a hobby. Mm-hmm. Every day I kind of look at what I've got what I'm doing, and it just takes a couple minutes to be thoughtful about that. Um, but then I also cycle through the things that I do have so nothing goes to waste or very little goes to waste. And I think that's the benefit of, of having a good food storage plan or having a good resource plan for your family, which is also going to be covered at PrepperCon. It, you know, we're trying to or we're hoping that it becomes an everyday part of your lives. It's, you know, just like it's an everyday part of our lives. I mean, it really, truly is. And just having that awareness can make all the difference. Absolutely. And uh, the thing that I'm really excited about, we talked about dietary changes. Nicola Pillion, um, she's from History Channels alone. She's going to be at PrepperCon. She's actually going to be talking about the, the ketosis okay. process. Right, the new- um, so when your diet changes drastically, she's going to talk about that process and how that affects the survival mindset. So we're going to go through the psychology, nice. the dietary changes. All those things are going to be addressed at PrepperCon. So and things that you might not typically think, oh, this is not a preppery item, but this, you know, this is really true, true real life, and that's what we're trying to, I guess, preach here. Absolutely. Thanks for listening to Prep Talk Radio. Uh, brought to you by Survival Medical, survival-medical.com. The only first aid kit, tougher than nature. First aid evolved. Catch up to the break. All-new K-Talk Media. Online at ktalkmedia.com. Let freedom ring. Welcome back to the show. And you're listening to Prepper Talk Radio here on AM630 K-Talk. Our new day, Friday, 10 a.m. We're excited about it. Yeah, Friday is not something to be scared of. Even if it ends up being on Friday the 13th, it's going to be, like, epically awesome. Absolutely. 
Cool. Every Friday. It's a great start to, to my weekend, at least, instead of having to work until 5 o'clock. Yeah. Well, hopefully I won't. <laughs> I wish I'll I could. Stop, I wish I could there. get off at five o'clock. There. I'm. A, I usually work about. Well, it's the traditional you know, job. That's yeah. We us, work. A self-employed guys go yes. almost twenty-four-seven. So, and anything to do to avoid that forty-hour work week, we pretty know, much do. Yeah. No, I agree. I agree. So, Survival Medical, our sponsor, and of course we'll be at PrepperCon as well. Survival-Medical.com. Got to check it out. Good They've stuff. got first aid for any scenario you're going to run across. I mean, if you're going backpacking. And you want something ultralight, they've got a backpacking ultralight. If you're going on a weekend voyage, they've got a, a, weekend a kit. Voyage. A weekend voyage. Mm-hmm. You've, 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 they've got a kit for the boat. I mean, if, you've got, if you're going on a car road trip, they've got kits for that. If you're going hunting, they've got kits for that. I mean, it's, it's, it's really simple. Check out their website. Check out their products. Find what works for you. And the nice thing is it doesn't expire quickly. It's got up to a 20-year shelf life. So that's fantastic. Good stuff. Good people. Good, the, good stuff. Great people, and they'll be they'll be at PrepperCon, yeah. and they'll actually have uh, Angry American directly across from them, so they'll be easy oh. to find because Angry American is one of the one of the most popular authors in the apocalyptic genre, and uh, he'll he'll be there. He'll actually do some stage time for us as well. So we're excited. PrepperCon's coming up April twenty first and twenty second at the Southtown Expo Center. Get your discount tickets at preppercon dot com. You're going to hear a lot from us about PrepperCon over the next few weeks until PrepperCon and maybe a week or two after because we just, I mean, that's what we're about, right? That's, we love that's it. That's where we started. That's where this show started. We started out as Prepper Talk, oh, excuse me, PrepperCon Prepper Prepper Radio, Radio. PrepperCon Radio. And evolved. And evolved into Prepper Talk Radio because we're more than just, you know, than just PrepperCon. PrepperCon's awesome, but uh, we want to expand. It's our favorite event, but there's yes. more to life than just one event. So we wanted that's to get correct. the full, well-rounded Prepper mm-hmm. taken care of. And we have another one of our sponsors with us here today who will also be at PrepperCon. We've got Clint from Emergency Essentials. Now, Clint, your title, which is freaking cool, is <laughs> Preparedness Consultant. Indeed. Yep. Preparedness Welcome to the show. Consultant. Thank you. I appreciate you guys having me on. Emergency Essentials appreciates this. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, we love, love Emergency Essentials. Yeah. It's one of my favorite go-to stores. It is. You know, in, if you live in Utah and you don't know what Emergency Essentials is, mm-hmm. You're living under a rock, or someone <laughs> trapped you in a barn. Yeah, I there's a right one down the street here from the station. They're on 106th. Absolutely, yeah, and yeah, 106. Uh, technically, they call it South Jordan Parkway, okay. which is kind of screwy because if you look at it on Google, uh, it says 968 South Jordan Parkway. Mm. So it's like it looks like it's south, but really it's 968 West South Jordan there Parkway. You go. There we go. There we go. So yeah. I mean, you got stores everywhere, but you also huge online. Um, yes. And the nice thing is, is like you, there's consultants at every store. That's correct. Yeah, we pride ourselves on uh, preparedness and uh, just really smart guys. We have some really smart women and men that work for us that understand preparing. And uh, you know, one of the biggest things you want to look at when looking at this stuff is a plan. Mm-hmm. You know, you, you can buy whatever you want, but if you don't have a plan, it's not going to work. Absolutely. Uh, and that's what we're there for is to help you start that plan. And, uh, and l- let going. me state a little bit in more detail: a written plan, right? <laughs> Very good. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. You know, you see so many times when people, uh, they say, okay, wait, what did we say we were going to meet at? Yeah, there we go. The, the thing in the corner, or did we say we were going to meet over at the church next door? I can't remember. So, yep. yeah, writing it down, absolutely. Put Smart it on your idea. digital devices so you have it with you. You can review it regularly. Yes. What your safety words are, you know, what, uh, how you're gonna, where you're going to pick up the kids or meet after school and yep. so forth. So Create yeah, a binder. A of, there you go. Your I know you love your binder. binder. Yeah. I, think, I think binders are key because some people don't have that digital device. But yes. if you've got a couple binders, if you've got two binders, one in each mm-hmm. each of my wife's bag and my bag, um, that also has survival resources so you can identify plants that, that are native to the area. Very and, smart, yeah. You know, different ways to start fires that we may not be as accustomed to um, and other types of shelters and knots just to kind of remind me, oh, yeah, that's what I need to do. Um, I'm definitely big on having a written copy of uh, mm-hmm. everything in print. Because yeah. someday yeah. we're not going to go there, but someday we w- may not be able to have. We won't have our digital devices in front of us. So, yeah, absolutely written, written in writing. So, all right, what have you got for us today? Here, uh, what did you want to educate? He's got us a whole layout for those of you yes. listening. He's got a whole layout. He's going to describe what we've got here on the desk, and then show us here. And maybe and we'll, what we'll we explain should, it as we go. Maybe we should describe a little bit more about emergency essentials. You're not just a food storage company. I think maybe that's the first thing we think about is so we want to get some food storage so we go into emergency essentials right yeah but that's true. so much more than that we are you know and it's interesting because it, food is really where we thrive i mean that's mm-hmm. kind of our thing uh we've got 
some of the uh, dehydrated stuff, but mostly freeze dried foods. We've mm-hmm. got it in cans. We have it in pouches. But absolutely, and we water got the bulk prep- grains as well. Bulk grains, yeah. We've yeah. got what we call super pills with all sorts mm-hmm. of different I've grains. I've bought quite them. a few of the super pills yeah, myself. Nice, yeah. And we even have uh, materials for you to store your own stuff. So okay, if you right. had some grain, Supplies, you mylar wanted bags. to mylar bags, buckets, Oxygen that kind of thing. Absorbers, everything. Mm-hmm. You got it. Yeah, the gamma got seal that. lids. Yeah. Well, the thing I love is you you have everything also for adventure as well. So as a scoutmaster. I send my scouts to Emergency Essentials when they're like, well, what do I need to do for food for the camp out? Go to Emergency Essentials. Grab some what do I need to yeah. do to Absolutely. cook my food? Go to Emergency Essentials. I need a new backpack. Go to Emergency Essentials. <laughs> Sleep bag. Yeah. 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 It's very Water affordable. Filters. And it's very simple to go in there and say, I don't know what I'm doing. Help me. And you guys are super helpful. Yeah, well, we, and we appreciate that. So, like you said, with the water, you kind of mentioned the water filter, and we have lots of stuff for not just water storage, but, yeah, mm-hmm, water mm-hmm. filtration and purification, which, remember, there are two different things. You can yes. filter water and you can purify water. Uh, but, you know, our consultants, we can talk to you about that. We can kind of run you through that process and just help you to find whatever is going to be best for whatever it is you're looking for. In other words, if it's for you or if it's for you and your wife or uh, your spouse, or even for a family of 10, we can go through those preparations for water storage and then the filtration and purification. So you can help them select the right equipment according to the size of their family, their needs, and so forth, and as well as storage and, and like you say, filter filtration or purification. Absolutely. Because yep. some people, yeah, like you say, don't really understand the difference. Fil- filtration, obviously, is pretty straightforward. You're filtering water. Purification, you're doing some sort of additive to the water right. to kill bacteria it, and viruses. And so forth. Absolutely, and virus is the key there because the virus is the one thing that you can't just filter out of water. Yep. So you've, you've got to purify it by killing that. So absolutely. So show us what we've got. All right, so this is actually a really cool product we have. It's called the Hydro Heat. Um, the Hydro Heat is a way that you can heat whatever it is, a mountain house meal or an MRE or even just something you've prepared yourself Mm -hmm. uh, by using something other than fuel or flame. There's no flames. You don't have to light a match. You don't have to have any matches with you. You don't have to have any sort of, uh, like like I say, gasoline or any other butane or propane or anything like that. So Clint just opened a package. It looks like a large hand warmer. Yes, and I'm glad you said that because this is almost exactly like a hand warmer where you open it up and it's exposed to the oxygen Mm -hmm. and that's what activates it. Chemical reaction. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This is the exact same thing except for instead of being activated by oxygen, it's activated by water. Interesting. Okay, so he just put it into a clear plastic bowl wrapped with a... uh, some black, what is that? Poly, poly, uh, yeah, whatever you call that stuff, the house, so you don't burn okay, yourself yeah. there. Yeah, so it's a black, it's, a it's like a, a little can cozy, right? okay? Yeah, 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 okay. like but a it's can for a cozy, whole... right? So he's got a clear bowl, you just put that in there, and now you're gonna pour some water on it. So, yeah, and it doesn't take a whole lot. Uh, basically, you just want to get it wet. So, I'm gonna put, I don't know how much uh, you'd say that a was, half maybe a cup? it may be half a cup, yeah. Now, well, on... it's simple, it's got a little line that says max fill, it does, oh, yeah, okay, okay, I see, yeah, because the idea really is just to kind of get it wet you don't have to go overboard in fact the reason that you wouldn't want to put too much in you wouldn't want to go over that fill line uh is because this water is going to actually start to boil really yeah it is so you'd put there's i have this uh what's that going to do to the countertop there <laughs> oh yeah that's true let's put it underneath something <laughs> or no, put it on the, on the yeah that's what yeah, there we go put there good point if it's, wow okay <laughs> so yeah i've got this uh this tin or this kind of okay. stainless steel container here so you guys got another a metal stainless steel bolt that's gonna i guess nest, nest inside, inside this yep and that's where your stuff will be so i'm just gonna put some water okay, he's in gonna here. put some water in that bowl and that'll be as if it were my food my mountain house meal right. or my okay. mre uh, and then, yeah, we'll just kind of give this uh, this heat pack just a little bit. Uh, honestly, it takes about 30 seconds roughly. Now, if the water, this water I have here is actually kind of cold. Uh, but if I had put really warm water in, which is not necessary, mm. but if I had put some warmer water, this reaction would happen a lot faster. Okay. So, uh, yeah, we just have to. So, anyway, as, as we put it in here, once this starts going, and you can you'll, you guys will see it in just a second, but I'll take this tin which would have my food and i'll put Mm -hmm. it in there and then i've got a lid which helps kind of keep stuff in there keeps the moisture in there keeps everything in there so it kind of looks like a tupperware lid with some latches so if you've got got freeze-dried food it rehydrates reconstitutes pretty quickly because it's got the moisture being trapped right Right, yeah yeah and and that's the thing about freeze-dried that's so much better about freeze-dried than about dehydrated is that you can still reconstitute it even if you have cold water Mm -hmm. it it takes longer for sure Mm -hmm. Uh, you know if you have hot water boiling water there you go. You can start to see that. I don't know if 
the microphone won't pick that up, but uh, uh, steam. Or steam. Yep. Big huge Holy steam cow. cylinder. Looks like yeah, like water boiling. And okay, now you just put the uh, stainless steel pot over the steaming water. Right, you can see the steam creeping out the, steam sides is creeping out the sides there. Holy cow! So yep, I'll put that I did on. Not expect that. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of the fun part about it is uh, is that it right there. It's like a it's almost like magic. A little science experiment here in the K Talk studio. <laughs> okay, so you just clamp the lid on top of this thing. Uh, kind of like a pressure cooker, so is it using some pressure at all? Um, there is a little bit. Yeah, it's <clears throat> it's more f- about just the heat that's being radiated on okay. the bottom there. But there is a little bit of pressure there, and this is just going to get hotter. In fact, it's uh, it, you really will start to notice in a few minutes the heat will start to creep out the sides. <laughs> that's the, crazy. The steam, yeah. So it's really fun. Uh, we've cooked some mountain house meals, and uh, we've seen them cook anywhere from five to ten minutes. But the most I was able to get in here because this is a twenty eight ounce ounce container uh okay. was it my uh, mountain house has a macaroni and cheese which is a three serving so it's huge mm-hmm. and i was barely able to get that in there so okay uh but it it heated it up it, it warmed oh, it up it, it warmed it up yeah it was great so interesting yeah and and i have done mres i've never really done my own thing in it uh just because mountain house and mres are so much easier but mm-hmm. uh yeah you could absolutely put anything in there that's Pretty fantastic. Cool. So, are you guys going to be selling this at PrepperCon? Yes. Yeah, we will have we'll have this. This is just called our our cooker because we also have something called a tumbler, uh, which is a little smaller, more for, for drinks. So, if you wanted to have you know okay. hot chocolate or something like that, you could do that for sure. Fantastic. Um, yeah. So we'll have this. We'll have some heat packs. Now, this heat pack I have here, it is a one time use. Right. So now that I've right. used it. It's done. Uh, what so, do those things cost? What are that little? Yeah, so they come in a pack of ten for okay. fifteen. So it's about a dollar fifty a pack. Okay. okay. Uh, for the smaller ones, it's about a dollar a pack, um, and they'll both get up to about one hundred and ninety degrees. Jeez. Is about what the temperature is. So be careful. That's awesome. Yeah, that's a lot of heat. <laughs> it's a lot of heat. So yeah, we'll ha- we'll have these there, and it definitely when you're a prepper con, definitely come by and see me. I'll be there, and I'd love to show anybody this. Very cool. Now uh, I have not had breakfast yet this morning. You should be cooking some eggs or something. Shame on me, yeah, for not bringing a mountain house meal. <laughs> and shame on Shane for not having for not eaten having, breakfast. Let I mean, me go out to my car. And I'll prepper. grab something. It's a little late now. You already. Got I've actually thing. got mountain house breakfast out there in the car. Nice. I'm hungry. I should have brought it in. Should yeah, yeah. Shame I, on I you. I actually too. got that at Emergency <laughs> Essentials. I just wasn't prepared for Shane's hunger. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I had Scott. a banana. So, yeah, it's something. Okay, so you've got some other stuff here too, as well. So, kind of give us the pitch of what you guys are going to be bringing to PrepperCon on April twenty first and twenty second. Sure. So, clearly, we have a ton of stuff. Yeah. Uh, but what we're going to bring is just some simple things, like so this hydro heat cooker, which I already mentioned. Uh, we'll have a fleece sleeping bag, so it's just kind of a smaller one, which can actually be used in conjunction. Kind of a liner for your sleeping bag. As yeah, well. kind of like a liner, and then also if you have these okay. mylar bag sleeping bags. Yeah. Uh, you can wrap that around a fleece. And, you know, adding the Mylar bag to any sort of sleeping bag will do two things. It'll help make it waterproof, but it will also increase the heat by about mm-hmm. 15, maybe even 20 degrees. Oh, yeah. So I yeah. actually use that. When I, I travel to Idaho a lot for work, and uh, sometimes I sleep in a dome out in the middle of mm-hmm. the fall and the winter. And I actually take a Mylar sleeping bag and nest it around my regular sleeping bag when it gets below 30. Mm-hmm. And Smart. I'm fine. You know, because my biggest issue is your, my face then gets cold, but I don't want yeah. you don't want to breathe in all the my bag. stuff right on my face. But a mylar bag above me mm-hmm. will help radiate that heat back and keep me warmer. And it's a it's a quick little simple trick. Lightweight, yeah, yeah, absolutely. super lightweight. So if you don't have one of these, it's a, it's an actual sleeping bag, not a blanket. Mm-hmm. Get right. down to Emergency Essentials. They'll have them at PrepperCon as well, but you can get them now. You don't have to carry them around all day at PrepperCon. Yeah, and so we'll have those, but we'll also have we'll we'll try and have a, a good variety of some fruits and maybe even some vegetables. We have these pouches mm-hmm. uh, of the freeze dried food, so we'll have bananas, pineapples, apples, strawberries. Just to warn you in advance, I'll be coming by regularly. That'll I'll be eating my lunch there. <laughs> right, I, lo- yeah. I love freeze dried. Yeah, if, if you fruits, didn't, didn't like, eat, just like, oh here, here's <laughs> Shane by. again. Need some more of these. Uh, the raspberries in particular. Just you, though. Yeah, you're the only one okay. that can just come I'll by and keep going. Make sure I have going, my prepper concert. That's one official. <laughs> yeah. And we'll be doing some footage there. So we're going to do some live yes, stream videos as well. So check us out. If you're not, if you're out of town, you're not able to make it in, um, shame on you because we've got people from Florida that have already bought tickets. We've got people from Alaska that have already bought tickets. And you've known about it for long enough, you could have gotten your time off. So, so, you better get, so get there. there. But if you can't, get into the store. 
Uh, they've got locations all over Utah. We do. So I, I just want to say something about that. We love PrepperCon, and the reason we do is because it's a bunch of like-minded individuals that know the importance of preparing, that realize that it is something that we all need to do. You know, and if, if the more my neighbors prepared, the less I have to worry about it. Absolutely. So, yeah, if you can't get into PrepperCon and see us, absolutely come into any one of our four locations. We have one in Bountiful, one in Murray, uh, my location in South Jordan. We also have one down in Orem. So, yeah, absolutely come by and see us. I just saw a pandemic kit on your site here. <laughs> yes. What is this pandemic kit? So that's uh, kind of like you would imagine it to be if, the, you know, when swine flu was kind of the big thing. Okay. Oh. Or uh, what was the other one? Uh, Snurs or Smurs, right. whatever it was oh, called. SARS. SARS. Yeah. SARS. Yeah. I knew it was something like that. Yeah, it just gives you some lining, some bag lining. So if you needed to uh, kind of quarantine off a room. Okay. Or if you needed uh, a, fa- a face mask. And masks and such. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, so some, some things like that. to kind of, I think there's even some tape in that kit, if I remember right. And I see an earthquake kit, auto kit. Yes. Um, well, the nice thing, too, is you can get out there and you can actually walk aisle by aisle and kind of build your own 72-hour kit. But I, I like 96-hour kit for mm. me is what makes sense. So Absolutely, go build your yeah. own. Um we're out of time for yeah. this segment. Brought to you by Survival Medical. Survival Medical.com. You guys need to start carrying their stuff. I'm telling you, it's amazing. Okay. Well, yeah, Check thanks it out. for coming in. Sure Absolutely. Appreciate we appreciate you having me in. Thanks. All right. And we'll catch you guys on the other side of the break. Thanks for listening to Prepper Talk Radio. All right. Welcome back to the show. You're listening to Scott and Shane here on Prepper Talk Radio on AM 630 on our new time on Fridays. Every Friday. It's going to be awesome. Going to make Fridays even more enjoyable. Than they are right now. It's kind of funny because all week I've been looking forward to this. Wednesday morning I woke up. I'm like, I gotta get to the station. No, yeah, I don't. I know. No, I was kind of Yay. bummed out Wednesday too because I couldn't be here. But it was fun to wait till Friday. Now it's like kicks off the weekend in a really special way. So if you're thinking about a cool project for the weekend, what what can you do to get a little bit better prepared? You know, pay attention to what we've been talking about today. I mean, you can you can get a little food storage. You can get head over to Emergency Essentials, grab a few items. You know. Or hop online and find a DIY for something you want to do at home. Mm-hmm. Now's the perfect time to start gardening. So you can also check out one of our other friends, good friends over at IFA. They'll help you get your garden started. Nice relaxing weekend. Mm-hmm. It's going to be a little on the sunny side, not so rainy, I think. I hope. I hope. You know, Or you can go online, survival-medical.com, and order your first aid kits. Mm-hmm. Get them in now. It's, don't wait until the show. To get all your first aid kits and everything else, because you'll probably need them when you least expect it. I love the little on-the-fly kit. Mm-hmm. It's kind of meant for a fly fisherman, but I well, think it's a perfect any, little... Any kind of fisherman, yeah. but yeah. Well, yeah, in particular fisherman. But I'd like to stick that in my bag. It's small. It's still got band-aids. It's got a lot of the little essentials that you really need, and I just leave it in my bag. And See, I like, I the, like that thing. the backpacker ultralight because of the mole skin, mostly. Mm-hmm. I mean, it has tweezers, so I can pull out all the slivers I get on a daily basis, <laughs> but it has mole skin, and, and when you're walking around a lot... I don't care what kind of shoes you have. There's going to be rubbing, and you're going to have problems eventually. Mm-hmm. I mean, you can do the double sock. You can do the nylons. You can do. I mean, there's so many different things you can do. Or you can wear Solomon's like I do. Yeah, but eventually you can get some <laughs> I'm a rubbing. Picky. You know, if you if you go hiking in those and you go water through yeah, water train. True. If you get them wet, now you're going to get blisters. Or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. So there's always a chance, and that's why I love having. Got to have just a little bit of moleskin. A little on bit hand. of something of everything with you at yeah. any particular time. That's me anyway. So we're talking about PrepperCon. Who's coming to PrepperCon? We've got one more guest on today, um, and it is Curtis. And let's bring him on here. Yeah. Hello, Curtis. Are you there? Oh, Curtis, Hello. can you hear? Oh, there, there you we go. go. A little bit of a lag. He put us on. He put us on mute. I bet he didn't want to talk to no, us. No, that's right. Because you were holding for so long, and we apologize. But thanks, <laughs> Curtis, with water prepared. Thanks for coming on, and thanks for coming to PrepperCon too. Hey, thanks, guys. We're excited. Ripercon's one of the uh, the best shows of the year to, to to go out and check out all the new gadgets for emergency preparedness. So I'm excited to be a part of it. Well, you know what's fun is I actually got a call yesterday from a guy by the name of Ron, who runs the I guess now the second largest preparedness expos in the nation, which are the uh, self reliance expos in Denver and Texas, and. He just surpassed the national the National Prepper and Survivalist Expo out of Tennessee and Louisiana. They they actually kind of fell fell short this year. They only had, from what he's telling me, a few hundred people there. Really, and his blame, shows blame get up to. Trump? I don't know. His, his shows get up to about five thousand. Mm-hmm. You know, our shows double that, at least more than. And and we've got the thing is those we have a larger space, so we have room for more people. We have more vendors. 
more interactive engagements, more things to do and more fun to have, but it's all very hands-on. Like if you go to the water prepared booth, you're not just going to see products and walk by. You can actually look at the products, feel the products, talk about the products, kick the products. It's, it's like kicking the tires. Mm-hmm. I mean, you can test it out. Now, Curtis, you guys are going to, you and, you and Zane will be there. What, Tell us about your product, first of all, so people get a better okay. idea. I, I think it's one of the sure. most phenomenal water storage solutions out there, but that's not all you do. No. Um, well, let me tell you about our tank first. We, 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 we set out to, to um, solve a problem in water storage. Uh, you know, everybody sees the need of food storage, um, but, the, but, but your food storage is not complete without water, especially nowadays where most of the, the, the food storage that people are getting is dehydrated and freeze-dried food. You need more water to be able to prepare that in time of emergency. So your, your, your emergency preparedness plan and your food storage is really not complete without a good water storage plan. And the problem or solutions that have been out there forever are the 55-gallon drums. Uh, they're big. They're bulky. They take up a lot of space. They're not meant to be stacked. They're not meant to be put on their side. They're not very um, user-friendly at all. No, not at all. And, and, you have to and have special pumps any, and everything. Mm-hmm. Exactly. If you've ever even tried to get those out and siphon and pump those out, then you've got to you know, pull the valve so that the siphoning stops and you lose a lot of water um, when doing that. So they're just very inconvenient. And because of that, two things happen. People don't store enough water, uh, and, uh, and the water they do store, they never refresh in or rotate out. Because it's too hard. Um, it's too difficult. Exactly. And so what they're doing is they're banking on, they really have the, the water stores there to check a box and feel good, mm-hmm. but in a time of emergency, it may not be... Uh, a viable solution may not even be um, good or safe water to drink mm-hmm. at that point. Mm-hmm. So we set out to, to fix that. We, we've developed a 160 gallon stackable uh, water storage tank. So you in the stack, you can get 320 gallons without taking up a lot of floor space um, and get 320 gallons. They have metal spigots on both in the middle and at the bottom um, to be able to easily get the water out has a big five-inch opening up at the top to make it really easy to look in there and clean out or rinse out when you want. So um, it, it, it's really easy to rotate. It's a, it's a standard hose bib on the spigot, so you screw that on and, and drag that out to the lawn or wherever you need to go, and um, and then you're then Much then you can rotate the way. water in a way. So my next um, question for you, if I'm not already interrupting you, which I do on a regular no, basis, <laughs> how much water does your family need? How much water does a family need to store? That's a great. That's a great question. So um, most most places, FEMA and the Red Cross and and, and everywhere is going to tell you you can survive with one gallon per person per day. And the word there so is that survive. Would be the, the, yeah, the word there is survive, and that's kind of. You know, zombies knocking at the door, bare minimum survival. That doesn't leave a lot for hygiene. Uh, the problem with that is if, if you're using any types of soaps and people are trying to conserve water, mm-hmm. that can create bigger problems, uh, you know, as you're eating from things with, with mm-hmm. soap because you're, you're not washing dishes properly. So uh, we usually recommend uh, to plan to on three to five gallons per person per day for at least 30 days. And the 30 days thing, it's, it's, I mean, if you, if you could have more than that, amazing. But where you want to be is at least 30 days in most localized disasters. We've studied um, everything from, from Sandy to, to Katrina to the, the Toledo water contamination and, and a couple of the big problems, localized disasters in the last few years. In every case, it takes about um, three to four weeks for infrastructure to get fixed, for help, outside help to get there to do that so you need to be able to to at least have water and comfortably uh survive for for a month so three to five gallons per person um per day and have at least 30 days is where you want to go and if there's a major disaster you can stretch that out because you can survive off one gallon a little bit yeah you can ration that out well plus it also gives you time to start finding other water resources to refill your containers right that's exactly right and with a five inch Opening at the top, it's a lot easier. Three inch was it three inch or five inch? I forgot. Five inches. Five inches. Five inches. It's a lot easier to refill from awkward containers. That's right? true. That's so, right. Exactly. One of the things we always teach, you know, when you're thinking about preparedness, when you're thinking about your family, you need to have that first thirty days figured out. You know, and I I love that you guys are on the same page with that because even if you know FEMA were on our side or the government, we're like, hey, we're here and we're here to help, and and it's not a bad idea. 
it's going to take them three, four weeks to get there, right? Right. If, exactly. If you look at Katrina, it took them three weeks to get there, and then another two weeks before they're actually really rendering aid that was food and water and resources. Mm-hmm. The first thing they did when they got there is really trying to govern, really trying to do policing efforts and get people to safety and get people to stop looting and, and stealing. Right. Food well, came and, and then- in, in some other case, like the West Virginia contamination a few years ago, there was about 400,000 people without water, um, and, it, and it was a chemical spill, and it got into the groundwater. Mm-hmm. Even those with wells on the outskirts of town actually were, were um, more than three weeks without drinkable water um, because they were, all the help came to the inner cities. Um, and, and came into the cities and fixed the infrastructure there, but the groundwater was so contaminated, so all of the smaller towns wow. and, and everything else on wells didn't have water for almost almost the full month. And even so, recent, even recently, Lo, uh, Logan, when they with their flooding, right. that flood water gets into the sewer and the water system and contaminates it, and you're that you have to wait till the flood waters go down and they fix the, the system. I was the up there yesterday, and they were still talking about cleaning oh, yeah. out water in their basements. Yeah, a lot I mean, of water. It, Water can be a major disaster, but it's even an even bigger disaster if you don't have it. And the key part is clean water, Mm -hmm. pure water. And the only way to keep that clean and pure is to have it in the right container. I mean, that's really super critical, having the right container. So your containers are, what are they made out of? So it's a high-density polyethylene, which means it's non-absorbent, non-permeable. Um, we, we kind of have busted the myth that you can't put it directly on the concrete. In fact, okay. we recommend that you store it on concrete because there's no leaching, there's no penetration um, in that high-density polyethylene. It's, it's considered the most inert resin there is, so it doesn't react um, awesome. to any other sort of, of, of chemicals. So um, it is BPA-free um, and free of, of all of the kind of harmful estrogenic chemicals that are in a lot of the plastics these days. Mm-hmm. Um, so that you can you can store the water with with kind of the peace of mind that you're not getting all that other bad stuff. Now you also have a an additive you can put into your tanks. It's a copper silver solution. That's right. Yeah, we're not huge fans of, of chlorine based water treatment, right. and and uh, chlorine works to disinfect the water. So what you're trying to do is kill anything that may be in the water, but chlorine begins to dissipate almost immediately, yep. and really all it leaves is the odor. Um, but a copper sulfate or silver ion that goes into the water remains in the water and it stays active, which means it prevents anything from growing so that you can store your water longer. Most, most chlorine, you should still rotate uh, six to 12 months with the water treatment that we give you with our tanks. You can go five years without having to, to rotate the water out. Five years. That's now that awesome. right there is going to save everybody a ton of money. A five year <laughs> right. solution rather than twice a year solution. That's huge. Now, now Sorry, but what if I don't have that much space? If I'm if I'm an apartment dweller, what solutions do you have sure. for me there? So so we we have uh, the same the same design tank, just uh, the little brother, uh, which is a 55 gallon stackable tank, um, and uh, and so a lot of people will use that. It still has the spigot, still has the big opening, but um, exact design, just 55 gallons. Very cool. Um, you can do that, uh, but every water storage plan needs to include filtration. Um, and purification. So you need to look at filters, and, and there's there's an amazing filter technology. I mean, even 10 years ago, if you wanted a good filter, it was three or 400 bucks. Mm-hmm. And nowadays, you can get a really good filter for, you know, $30 that, that is filtering to the same degree as, as those nice ones were 10 years ago. So you yeah. should have filtration um, and purification, which, which in, in an extreme emergency situation, not to go back on what I just said, but even even the chlorine at that point, if, if you needed to, to be able to disinfect the water and be able to drink that, you can. Um, it ends up being eight drops of, of like a, a non-scented, non-concentrated mm-hmm. um, bleach, eight drops per gallon. And also keep in mind that even when you buy uh, liquid bleach, liquid uh, sodium hypochlorite, it, it only lasts about six months on your shelf. So you yep. need to rotate right. that as well. It loses efficient, efficiency, so you need to use more the older it gets. So if you're going to store right. that, you want to make sure you're storing a powder version. There we go. You know, so that way yep. you can make it up on demand. Um, anyone, any good prepper that's been doing this for a while knows Clorox, is, you know, it's gone in six months. Any mm-hmm. standard right. bleach, it's gone in six months. So, well, we're out of time. Thank you for being on with us. You guys check out waterprepared.com and make sure you hit up PrepperCon on the 21st and 22nd. Water Prepared is going to be there on the main aisle. 
showcasing all their products, and they'll be there to answer all of your questions. Thank you so much, Curtis. Yep, thanks, guys. And thanks to our wonderful sponsors, Survival Medical, survival-medical.com. Come and see them at PrepperCon and check out their website. The best products that I personally have ever used. Love their stuff. Thanks for joining us. Catch you next week. Have you ever wanted to explore the actual...